Good afternoon. Welcome to week three of Basic Course in Vedic Astrology by Shiva, Sarva Bangla Institute of Vedic Astrology. We'll see the agenda. So we'll see uh, some basics. Back to basics. So we all are familiar with these, but it's good to recap at least the important things that are part of a good learning. So I'm going to show seven components of good attitude, seven good learning habits, then something about this course, what you can expect and what can help you get the best out of this course. Okay. Then we will get into the core topic for today, which is Vedic Astrology in the modern world, the applications that we are uh, we have for Vedic astrology in the present age. So these are the uh, things we'll touch upon today about this zodiac belt. What are the factors for our well-being? What's the nature of astrology? Where all it's used? What are the types of astrology? And what exactly Shiva is going to focus on? Okay, the specific astrology that's part of our course. That's what we are going to mention. So there will be an audio check after this. Then meeting feedback check at the end of the content. And then we can have self-reflection where I get in from all the attendees then followed by questions and answers. This table here is a kind of guideline for what I expect from this audio check, what's the purpose, as well as what you can, what this self reflection and QA went for. Okay, sounds good. Now let's go to audio check. I've launched it. It should be on your screen. At present, 45 people are part of this meeting. Okay, 44 out of 49 responded. <coughs> I'll stop this here. I'm sharing the results. It says 82%, that means 37 out of 45 say the audio is really good, very good, or well audible. Eight people say it's good and audible most of the time. So for these eight people, you please check at your end if something can be done. That's about 18% from the population that's polled. Now I'll move to seven good components to have the right attitude for learning. It's a general one, not just astrology. It's any, for anything. I begin with some hangman. So can someone, what word? Could this be inspiration? Perfect. Yes, it's inspiration. The second one. Purpose. Purpose. And Mano, who's giving this answer? Sunita. Okay. Purpose. Yes. Jagadish Baba. Next one. Knowledge. 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 Very good. So what we are doing is. Basically, ensuring we have the inspiration, have a clear purpose, and you're going to combine that with this knowledge. So what do we do with these three? We'll reach our aim. We focus on the target that's meant for us in this learning. But there are some other things as well to be done. So first one is we need to be patient. Okay. That means there could be mistakes and we should not 
mind that. Second is have the faith. So we, I'm there as instructor. So any any anywhere you have doubts, you should reach out and you should be able to do uh, all the things that are in this course. Lastly, keep an open mind. So don't saturate yourself with too many questions and all. Just follow this course. Questions can come or you can clarify later when we have more information that shared to you. Okay. That is about the main components for developing the right attitude for the learning. Next is seven good habits for learning. Okay. First one. Can you guess what this is? Attentiveness. Listening. Okay. Planning. Any other input? Concentration. Discipline. Follow, 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 follow the instruction. Classroom. Okay, good. So this is about listen to a coach. Second, what is this? Focus. Focus, concentrate. Think, focus. Thinking. Thinking. Okay. Here what I mean is do self-study. Third, what is this? Discussion. Discuss, practice. Discuss, practice. Yeah. Practice. Very good. So, so this is study with a practice. partner. Learn with a partner. Fourth one, what could this be? Perform. Learn from children. Yeah, practice. From children. Performance. <laughs> practice. Okay. Teach. It's closer yes. to the first response. Age is not a limit. Yes. Yes, exactly. Teach. You should teach also. Teach somebody is totally new. Teach a junior. This one? Practice. Whatever you are. Stay fit. <laughs> Exercise. Oh, you already see. Be fit. Stay fit. Be fit. Next one is? Hmm. Relax. Enjoy music. Do Develop what you love. Relax is home. correct. Last one. <clears throat> See, good sleep. Sleep, sleep well. Reach your, yeah. goals. Sleep. Reach your goals. Rest well. <laughs> sleep well. Exactly. Rest sleep. well. Sleep well. Okay. These seven things are essential. All of them are equally important. If you follow this, it will be really excellent in terms of learning. Okay. Thanks for all your inputs. I'm proceeding to the next. What to expect from this year one course? Okay. So basically four questions I'm going to answer. It is also kept in the orientation link document. I have kept it in the Google Drive, but it's good to discuss it here or show it here. So four questions are, what are we learning? So what's the scope that you are covering? Second, what is the skill I'm going to, you know, I can expect to gain from this or the level of expertise. Then is it going to be a lot, lot of memorization, uh, you know, too much information. So that's a common, hence it is here. Then lastly, are we going to do any chart analysis or not? And to what detail, to what extent? So the answers are as below. So first one about the scope. So we are going to see uh, direct application in terms of practice. Okay, we are going to see how to analyze um, the horoscope. We are going to do the South Indian horoscope only. And it's more about the uh, actual hands-on experience. That's how you are, you are going to focus mostly on, very less on theory. So out of scope is, the theory or reasoning behind why those things are there, but that can be done in the advanced level, not now. And then philosophy. So I just gave an introduction to that philosophy. We are not going to touch that anymore. Now the second question, the level of expertise I can or you can gain. One is analyzing the charts. You can find out about a person's personality, 
find out how the planets affect or influence and a typical SWOT analysis, okay? What you cannot in this one year course or the first year course is looking at planet combinations, finding yogas, which are like various um, uh, meanings of planets placed in specific locations. Then nakshatras, that also is out of scope for this year. And any other topics like planetary transits or dashas, those things are not in scope of the first year. The third question is about the content. So it's not going to be about cramming and all. You just need to attend the classes. It's meant for those who are working. And this is uh, easy pace, I would say. Some might find it too slow, but some might find it fast. But on uh, a general level, this is a correct pace that seems to suit most people. So we are going to choose that. And it's about applying, applying what we are uh, discussing in classes. And you always have the recording so you can uh, do the recap through the recording. Or also discuss in the next class in the Q&A section. The last one is about are we going to do practical analysis or so? That's pretty told that. And when uh, in two months itself, you will be able to find at least something, something from the um, chart. So we are going to do it kind of uh, layer by layer. We'll add on more information. We are not going to like bombard with so much information that you get confused. So that's why it's going to be uh, slow enough pace so you can absorb well but it's important to attend the class if not at least go through the recording so that there's no gap created in your learning process that's about this seven tips to get the best from this course this is more specific for our course okay the earlier what we saw was for learning in general so the thing that we saw at the right attitude, then the right habits. Thirdly, this one is about be regular in attending. Otherwise, watch the class recordings without fail. Get your hands dirty. That means I might give some activities during this course of this uh, of the, in the classes. So please don't miss it. Do them. I sometimes give homework also. So you please do that. Then. You don't need to really read books not recommended uh, in the first year. Otherwise, it becomes like confusing for many students. Then ask, feel free to ask any question. However silly it might seem, okay, no question is silly. Not asking is silly. Last one, be participative. You can share your experiences in the class. The more you engage, the more you remember, you know, from the class, uh, all the things that are discussed. So let's move on. I'm just setting the background to what's going to come up uh, on Vedic astrology in modern world. So we are going to see some overview of solar system. It's about three slides only. So most of you might be familiar. We have seen this in our school. For those who are not familiar, I was also mentioning some of the details um, which is good to know and remember how uh, all these planets, the solar system is, you know, in terms of its structure and the size and all that distances. These things will be shown here. So this is the this is artistic picture. So, okay. So now... Uh, just to see, uh, just to tell you something about this. So we have here four planets. This is the sun, orange, yellow. So we have four planets here, four here. There is a lot of what you see, something like stones. Um, does anyone know what this is? This thing separating Mars and Jupiter? Asteroid belt. Okay, there's one more that's outside, almost that at the day. That is Cooper. Now coming, yeah, Cooper. Yeah. 
now coming to if you see the kind of relative mass okay of these planets sun is literally if you take the, the solar system mass that's what i'm discussing 99.85 that's completely sun remaining is very 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 less planets put together is 0.135% okay in mass comets 0.01 okay. satellites so these are very negligible okay but you can then imagine how massive it is sun is and how you know almost you know our mass is literally very less so that's the uh, some idea you'll get of what we are discussing in terms of the solar system and celestial objects the next slide is there are two ways the planets are divided you had seen in the earlier picture four are you know within that asteroid belt four are outside now there are some key differences so we have these called inner planets mercury earth mars mars these are like uh, from the sun in the order these are in the order this is then outer planets jupiter saturn uranus neptune okay can someone say what other difference can we do we have between inner planets and outer planets the inner ones are more solid inner planets are smaller in size when compared to outer planets inner planets size. are smaller when compared to outer planets okay there was one input earlier inner ones are solid solid yes very good yeah inner ones are closer to sun the yes. influence is higher what influence is higher the uh, you know their influence on uh, on our behavior or, or or whatever our decision making pattern or whatever mm, no not exactly we can't uh, do that kind of distinction the uh, the okay. inner ones are closer Here to that can have enormous uh, that's obvious uh, so yeah. the inner ones are inner planets are closer to sun the outer planets are farther from sun okay and the inner one like having the um, uh, more like the orbit, orbital velocities are more in the inner one yeah so the, since their orbits are smaller then the planet in, inner planets inner maybe planets are much uh, atmospheric atmosphere difference will be there in inner planets and outer planets true true for example the saturn is very very less density okay mm. when you earth and all we find that we have a solid surface right, mm. right? but saturn is literally gas so we can't step on it if you, it looks like solid from here but it's like that okay okay very good thanks for the input and uh, i think uh, inner the last slide here very slowly and uh, i think outer planet they spin very fast i think no it's the other way around Yeah, yeah other way around it should be ha ha okay outer are very slow ha very in slow and inner are very fast ha inner planets take less time for a day and night uh, the, for the rotation and revolution yes, yeah. is, is it fair to say that the outer planets influence last longer or their whatever yes yeah, they span last longer yeah. the, the time they take to cross a zodiac sign will be much longer okay compared to inner planets I have okay. one doubt. Uh, I have one doubt. Yeah. Uh, now uh, Pluto is not considered as a planet, right? If you take yeah. the reading. Yeah, it's considered the dwarf planet because if you include that, we'll have to include many other things as planets. So that's why they decided to exclude it. Okay, so we are not uh, considering that at all. Never yeah. have. We won't consider that. Uranus and Neptune also are not considered in the astronomy. Oh. Enough. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This is the, the yeah, last Mr. one in this. Mr. Hari, can What? I make a request, please? Yeah. Can yeah. Can you have only one person talking at a time instead of many people talking at the same time? Thank you. Okay. And I think somebody's uh, camera got switched on by mistake, maybe because. yeah please take care of that now this is uh earlier we saw the massive the mass of the sun okay so much like entire all the planets put together is like so less in mass 0.1 percent now this is 
about the size of the uh, sun. Size, if you see, you can put 1.3 million Earths to fill up the sun. So that's the kind of massive size it is. Okay, now we are going to see relative sizes of the all the planets compared to Earth. Okay, now you see Jupiter is the largest planet. It's 1,120% the size of Earth. Saturn is also uh, huge. It's 945% of Earth. Then comes Uranus, Neptune. Then we have Venus, plus slightly almost similar size, 95% of Earth in terms of size. Mars is much smaller, 53%. Mercury is the smallest. Okay, that's about this. I don't want to get into too much of astronomy. You can uh, go through that. A lot of material is there in the internet. Okay, but this should give you some um, idea and perception of how to uh, look at the solar system in terms of uh, the, their relative masses, the sizes, and so on. But, okay. I have but if you a see doubt. the. Yeah. I have a doubt. Uh, does it that does the influence of the planet uh, is uh, directly proportional to the influence on human beings? Oh no, there is not nothing like that. Okay. <clears throat> the only thing that differs is the amount of time it can influence in a specific zodiac sign because of the in the duration of their orbit. Okay, that's the only determining thing. Otherwise. There is nothing like a like, uh, difference of influence in terms of uh, their distance from uh, the earth, okay, or the sun. Okay. Now we are getting into the Shiva content. The core content today is applications in the model world of Vedic astrology. I'll switch to the other slide. So far, are you able to follow easily? Yes. Yes, Vinkat. Yes, sir. Now I'm going to show this Shiva slide deck. Okay. That I gave you the kind of short overview of this. So let's move to this. Okay. <clears throat> so everyone is familiar with the left side of this? Yes. It is called horoscope. It's a South Indian style yeah. horoscope. Now we see these 12 things which are nothing but these zodiac signs. I mean, almost everyone will be familiar with these. And what we are seeing here on the right side is something like a you know uh, belt okay that's it's called zodiac belt now how we came to this belt i'll have to show it um, a small explanation i'll give okay now we know that <clears throat> sun is at the center not the earth but in astrology we'll take earth as the center but in this way so that you can understand. Let's say this is the sun. And the solar system, as we know, you look, consider not a perfect diagram. Let's say this is the earth. Okay. Mm. And surrounding everywhere, so the stars are very far away, right? Stars are much, much, much far far away compared to the sun. Several light years away. That means there will be, some, let's say, somewhere here throughout. It's not just along this, but it will be in top, bottom, everywhere we have stars. But this thing is only a zodiac belt is, is only considering some of these constellations, I mean, from the entire celestial 
uh, world. Now, how this zodiac sign are coming in picture is you take a line from the earth, okay, and extend it further, okay. Then, similarly, when the let's say earth is here, extend this further, okay, without getting into any too much technical. If you understand this visually, that is enough. Mm -hmm. Then draw a line from here, connect the sun and here. Here. Okay. Now what you are doing basically, this zodiac thing is nothing but tracing of all those lines. Okay. Which are much farther than the sun. And you have an elevation and uh, declination of, I think it's about 13 degrees or so 13 13 or 16, I'm not sure, but it's that much only, that kind of range. So that's why you have this range here, this, okay. And you end up with something like a belt. And all those stars which are in this belt, they have been divided into 12, what we have, zodiac signs. Mm. Zodiac is nothing but it's a, it's a collection of stars and they have been given some shape based on what uh, it can. There are two kinds of theories behind there. One is that it's based on mythology. Second is about the way they uh, form a shape when you try to join it. Mentally, you join it. Okay. And important to remember is that these, for example, if you see this, I'm showing this, let's say this. Okay, this is Sagittarius. So if we have, you see these three stars here. These three stars are not on the same plane. Okay, they can be uh, head and front. Okay, but if you look at it in front of it, it will it will appear like this. Okay, okay. this star could be 200 light years away. This can be 65 light years away. So that's the way. If you see from the side, they'll be in different distances. But if you see from the front, they'll appear like they are on a same plane, on the same plane, like in a belt. Okay. That's one thing to keep in mind, just as a, for awareness. Okay. That's about this. So we have divided this thing into 12 and that's what is being mapped here. Okay. And just to note a few things, our uh, uh, vernal equinox, that means the solar calendar. So this is what we start with always. Aries and then things go clockwise okay always this way only and like this will be first second third fourth and it will end up with Pisces as 12 so this is how we are dividing the celestial sphere from the celestial sphere we are uh, you are taking the zodiac belt and in the zodiac belt we are dividing it into 12 uh, 12 divisions Okay, assuming Earth is the center, that, that's how we are getting this, because we, from the Earth only we drew everywhere. So it's the uh, representation is geocentric. That means Sun is in the center. Okay, that's about this. Zodiac. Just one, one question. Okay. So don't mm -hmm. worry if you don't remember. Yeah. No, this names, uh, we have, uh, this is, I mean, we have our own names for this, right? In uh, what we call, I think, because I'm, the earth is equal and in South India, this is called different, right? This is the Rasi, right? Some Mesha Rasi or that is the names of it. I think it will help if you put that also because it's more familiar. I mean, at least some of it. I am familiar. With we'll cover both. Both mentioned. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, we cover both actually. This is just for introductory class. We just having only English. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think we have time, so we can do that. So this mm -hmm. is Mesha because those who are not familiar should get familiar. <laughs> that that's important. Mesha. Because Rishabha. That, that vocabulary is also important. I'll just switch off my video because my writing is becoming slow. For some time, I'll switch off my video. Or others who have it on should also switch off the video because they're facing some speed issue. 
Okay, now I'll write. Yeah, so Aries is uh, Mesha. Then we have Mesha Sorry? Taurus is Rishabha. Uh, yes. We don't see a screen. Sorry? Uh, have Next. you shared the screen? Uh, yeah. It but I can't. Shared. No, no. He's already writing it on the box there. People are able to see it. It is shared only. Next is Mithuna. Jemina is Mithuna. Can, sir, can someone say? Kataka. Yeah. Karaka, Kataka, some people have different names. Karaka. Okay, I'll just say Kataka. Then Leo is Simha. Simha. Vogo will be? Kanni. Kanya. 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 Tula Vrishik. Ah, very good. Tula Vrishika. Sagittarius, Dhanu. Dhanus. Samse, Samse, Dhanur. Okay, we'll just. Dhanus. Makar, Om. Capricorn. Makar. Makar, Makar. 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 Kumbha. Kumbha. Meen. Meena. Okay, that's all it is. But in the classes, you'll find both mentioned there. Okay. Okay. Anyway, thanks for that input, and we have done this once. So I'll move on. This is how just another diagram from the top top view. Okay, and one thing you can see is since we have twelve, so total if you take one revolution is three sixty degrees. So if you have twelve houses, that means. We have 30 degrees for each zodiac sign. This is very important, 30 degrees. Okay, because when you generate charts, you'll find that along with planets, some degrees will be mentioned. That's what it means. Within 30 degrees only, every planet will be in the specific sign. Okay, now... Go go to the next year yeah so what are the factors for our well-being so there are six here mentioned so we have biological factors heredity that is then your lifestyle your political situation like in the country if there is on a civil war and all it affects our well-being environmental factors like weather and socio-economic cultural factors right these are now there could be other factors can someone make a guess? What could be other factors affecting us? Karma. Uh, high tides and low tides. Karma, very good. High tides and high tides, low, low tides. tides. Okay. Lunar cycle. Yes. Correct. Any other? Yes. Yeah. Any other? Uh, moon swings. From and the celestial, celestial uh, positions of okay. Earth. Yes. Yeah. Planetary eclipse. moments then. Eclipse. eclipse also. Eclipse. Yeah. Okay. That includes in the celestial movement. Then any other? Birth time and birth. Lagna. Yeah. Time. Okay, yeah, that's connected. Yeah. That's how we are connecting with the planetary moments. Then that's right. So we have karmas, past karma, divine providence, and all the stars. Stars here means includes these planets and all that. So that's where astrology comes into picture because in the past, all this influences of planetary positions, planets, with respect to, to the birth uh, time and place, as well as when these uh, planets cross specific signs, 
based on the stage of that person has been studied in very detail okay great amount of detail and all that has been documented the original scriptures some of them are not available for us but there have been others um, like varaha mira they have um, you know documented it jataka and several, several texts are available that's the basis for what we are we are going to cover and learn on top of it dr balachandra keni has studied thousands of horoscopes and he is built an a data set with evidence on top of what's available in the scriptures mm -hmm. and that's how you know the content that he's make is very much uh, what's already been studied in real as well both in the theory from the from the text and in the real through his practice that's combined together and that's how uh, form the basis for this learning content okay now this is interesting one it is not futurology it is not predictology so can someone say what could be the meaning of this it's quite uh, contradictory to the usual perception we have on astrology means it doesn't tell you what is in what your future holds for that's what not futurology means you cannot and you cannot predict what is going to happen because again there are a lot of points a lot of things mm -hmm. which influence right so i may mean, just with a chart maybe it doesn't give you can't predict with because there are so many other influencing factors and any any one influence you can say which, which is not available in charts no environment or political when we saw those things right so environment or political or socio economic those are those are things which affects our life right the yes. karma and, karma cannot be yeah uh, karma purpose. karma is yes that's amazing karma. yes whatever we have done that we have to the can you please repeat whatever we have done in our past life that will affect our uh, present life so part of the karma theory and if you see karma theory itself okay i'll just spend one minute in this so your karma theory itself says this is some verse by draupadi okay to yudhishthira he is she says what happens or what we experience is a combination not some single thing it's a combination of number 1 past karma number 2 <clears throat> you can include past present then something which is destined okay or what was mentioned earlier as divine providence third is your chance that is also a factor this is there in the karma theory itself as according to what i saw in one so free will many. you are telling about free will yes free will mm -hmm. okay now that is the reason we cannot really pinpoint anything mm -hmm. in specific as a cause it's always a combination of this and that's exactly what uh, forms the foundation for our approach in shiva we always say that 50% by stars 50% by free will okay i'll be doing several other discussions in between during the course of this uh, the classes so uh, uh we will we'll repeat on this okay repeat means we'll try to discuss more things related to this because it may not be 
apparently clear initially but just to understand this is an important thing we don't consider that the chart is going to tell our future it doesn't tell our future it tells the possible conditions we can be but if we take appropriate actions things can be different or different in the sense your experience will be much better okay so we don't use it as a way to blame for the way we are or blame for what you know we might experience it's not like that uh, astrology is supposed to be a guideline for us in order to take the right or actions right correct actions so that our experience is good so basically it's about aligning or being in harmony with the uh, nature that's basically the, what we are trying to the several other you know thought schools of thoughts it's all about aligning to the harmony of universe so we don't use astrology as something to pinpoint like it's not giving a map of our future it's just telling what you might the conditions you might be in future and also about our natural dispositions what we are likely to do more than other things so those those things are also available but our mind we have our intellect that's our it's in our control so we should be able to use this information or knowledge to align with our intellect through our actions for my much better experience so we have enough control okay at least if the person that's the general thumb rule if you go by that it's really good so i am now going to what astrology is about it can give you know information about our you know natural tendencies about the way we think about um, our relationships okay about our ability to write ability to think and so on A lot of things we can find hence it's termed as a tool for introspection here we are saying astral chart and then interpretation so astral chart is nothing but our the birth chart and how we interpret it and it's going to be a guidance for us so these are the various things in astrology it's a science because it's been studied lots of statistics there and and also the planetary movements as part of astronomy they are you know known in detail of how they are moving we have that data hence there is a lot of science in it it's also an art because the way you interpret needs intuition and personal wisdom it's very much important that's the reason you might not find astrologers always agree because they have their own way of assigning importance to the things of course there is a lot of mathematics and lot of permutation combination calculations are there and then the result and interpretation so the combination of all of these things that make up the um, body of knowledge called astrology now we come to the types of astrology you might be familiar with many of these so this natal astrology is about what we see typically in our families which is based on the birth chart also called natal chart then we have horary so this is a person asking a specific question at that time they make the thing or it's called and it's it's, it's a specific to the time when it's asked and only one can be asked then election is picking the best time for an event like auspicious times actually uh, earlier in the ancient times that is what it was used for mainly by sages to find the right times for performing rituals yeah. and all that mm. even then for what day day check with the worldly affairs sorry even for going for wars they check with the it... yes yes wars self realization mm. all of those things many things then mundane mundane is nothing about the world events like typically about the hap things happening in among countries and all that or earthquakes seismology things thing, those things mm-hmm. then medical astrology this is also a very important and quite practical one it's about 
um, our relation of body parts with the planets and about identifying diseases based on the planetary positions and movements. Then we have relationship, and this is that's the typical thing we have during math with matching horoscopes. But in uh, Shiva, in, the, in these courses, we focus only on three of these. First is the natal astrology, medical, not so much in detail, but we'll cover the basics. Then this one. This means okay. not really focused on marriage, but about, about people, you know, about, um, I'll come to that in the next one, is about person's uh, inherent Inherent yeah. skills, strengths, weaknesses. Okay, relationship with others. That's what here relationship is about. About other people, not about marriage, really. Okay, that's our focus is medical science, personality development, human resource management. I mean, if you look at it in terms of our uh, uh, normal living and daily affairs, these are the main things that will be focused. This is just an overview for what medical astrology is. People, some may not be even aware of this. So we have planets assigned for different, you know, uh, these are different signs. We also have some planets. They're also we, connected with chakras. Right? Yes, very much. Yeah. So this is a typical thing about how signs are mapped to uh, the body parts. And as you, as the, as I showed you earlier, things always start from Aries, and that's a typical April May month. Okay, so then Aries is head, Taurus is neck and throat, and so on. It goes in the same order like the human body, ending with feet mm -hmm. for Pisces. Okay, that's the typical division. Then we can find risk factors for diseases, cardiovascular, that is heart disorders. Then about cancer, traumatic propensity. Then about fertility. Uh, you know, uh, in some some placements you'll find, for example, Venus is in uh, fairy signs or fire signs. There can be difficulty, you know, uh, conceiving or delay in marriage. Those things are there. And since Doctor Bala is, is a medical doctor, so he has uh, done quite a bit of research in this and many of his things are really um, very accurate especially the medical astrology part okay so when that i have a doubt here so you yeah. uh told previous thing uh, you know about the zodiac sign specified certain body parts so in the sense uh how uh how is it uh, i don't understand that in the sense uh is is that going to be a problem in that body part? That's what that's what you're saying, or how? Yeah. In terms of the body parts, yeah. So, for example, if somebody is having, um, I'll go back to this. So, if if um, sun is in Leo, mm -hmm. okay, you find Leo is mapped to heart, so they're susceptible. Mm -hmm to heart disease like that that's um, one example i'm okay 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 so that so time when we are seeing uh we need to see uh the sign and uh you know uh, what kind of a body part according to the sign it would be yeah yeah oh. can we, we we need to see the planet position sometimes okay. if, a, if a planet is transiting specific zodiac sign there can lead to it issues like that okay some for example rahu moon combination generally creates irritability in a person okay is there a lot of details there okay just i am giving few examples sure. Thank you. okay and venkat you just mentioned that uh, as an example that sun is in leo you might have a heart problem is it only we uh, look for sun or uh, as you said even a moon or any other transiting yeah. planet also can other have an effect so it'll be there yeah mm. okay thanks hey. While teaching me. Getting some idea. I'm not giving any information. Mm. Okay. You have a question? Okay. So now if you see what we gather from the chart, that's what is mentioned here for personality building. 
we get to know the person's traits attributes key skills talents strengths weaknesses okay i can add some detail there so traits and attributes so, so some examples are like we can find a person's uh, i'll switch off my video sense of humor okay then thinking pattern then and you can find uh tendency for as a philanthropy okay then here are some examples if i had to give writing ability then for arts communication sense and weaknesses so some examples could be like a person's uh, leadership quality or okay uh, the person if it simplicity amount of simplicity modesty calibility and so on okay i mean i'm just giving very few examples so these are some examples i'm giving so you get to know a person's uh, something typically will never know we'll not even be aware so these things are possible to get based on a person's uh chart okay just even basics even first year itself you'll be able to find a lot of these okay and as we uh, discuss in the class we'll be cross verifying with your own you know birth charts then you will be many times we have seen like i have done two batches for the first year we find many of these are actually matching so that's that gives additional you know credence to all this data that we are you know discussing or going through now i'll move on so the other that was about personality this is about our relationship relationships like typically in our profession so uh, that also is possible in this like we can find person is uh, like you know suited for the person is suited for let me mute everyone okay i see somebody raising hand uh, let me discuss that in q and a okay so we can find if somebody is better suited for self employment or like business or for you know the service industry like as an employee or person will be entrepreneur or will, will be legend or will... those things we can find in these then suitable occupations whether they are suited for chemical industry suited for sports suited in, as manager mm -hmm. and so on then efficiency your you know amount of your focus or your, your your compassionateness or your ability to um, lead people or your contacts with influential contacts or with government whether you'll work in a large organization whether you professionally involve travel these are many things you can find based on uh, this natal chart then then we are able to this is just a summary of the same thing <clears throat> so we can find why we are the way we are that that's actually the biggest lesson i could uh, gather when i was doing this so i you become much more aware of your own strengths qualities and all okay that's the greatest advantage even if you don't practice astrology you become aware of a lot of things okay that's very uh, useful i would say uh, um you know learning from yeah what's happening now 
vital loose and recommendation. Okay, these things will be there when you when you cover the content for the uh, upcoming lessons that we have. That's about this. So I am going to go back to that class plan deck. So I'm going to post, show the poll now for the feedback, then it will be followed by self-reflection and then Q&A. Yeah, it should be there on your screen. We have 15 and people. Thirty four responded so far. Sir, it is not uh, accepting my poll. Yeah, the submit button is not. Uh, yes, active. yes. Guys, yes, yes. calling. It's already received forty one. There are five questions. If you don't, Maybe you can uh, maximize all five. No, then the submit button will not be active. So you need to answer all five. Forty six responded so far. How to submit, sir? You answered all the five. Okay, otherwise, don't worry, you can tell me verbally. Okay, I'm ending the poll. Can't be unable to submit. It is only three uh, questions he could see. The other two questions are not uh, visible, and we are not able to submit. You have to scroll down. Scroll down. You have to scroll down. Scroll down. Okay. Anyway, that's okay. So you can tell me verbally. Uh, uh, what's your input? It's shown on the screen. The questions are there on the screen also. The meeting base is fine. Side. Yeah, it is fine. You learned okay. something today. I feel, yes, yes. I feel I learned something today. Okay. Third one. Third one. Practical activity was engaging, did not interest me much. Engaging. Activity. Engaging. Engaging. Okay. Topics oh. in general are easy to understand. Yes. Audio quality. audio quality is good, good and audible most of the time. Okay, fine. Thanks. Now I'm sharing the results from others. So overall, if you see 47 gave the response in poll. So 45 out of 46, 98% say meeting pace is fine. One person felt it was too slow. 45 out of 46, again, 98% say they learned something today. One person says it did not learn anything today. Um, activity, and I didn't give any activity as such, but uh, most, most people found engaging 43 out of 46. Three people say it did not interest much. Two out of 46, that forms 4% say, all topics were hard. 70%, that is 32 people say all were easy. 12, 
out of 46, 26 persons say topics were partially hard, rest easy. 31 out of 47, 66 persons say audio was very good, well audible. 32 persons, 15 people say audible. Parts are not on three other. Even persons yeah. inaudible most of the time. Connect Muting every. Okay, thanks for this. Let's move on to self reflection. Okay, I look forward to your inputs. What did we learn today? To learn astrology, we need to concentrate, understand, practice, have patience. Hmm. Very good. You remember so much. Thank you. Any other De input? De De degrees of each zodiac. Very good. Then? Oh, the solar system. Science. Solar system. Where is it placed? In the planet and outer planets. Outer planet. Yes. Zodiac, belt and zodiac. Zodiacs. Body body. Yeah. Zodiacs. Zodiac signs, yes. What else? Uh, the type of the type of reading uh, charts, the different medical astrology, uh, the different types of uh, yes. The degrees between the zodiac signs, the that it is 30 degrees. Karma theory, what we experience is a combination of Past or present, yeah. it, it, is, it is not futuristic and not uh, predictable. Excellent. Yes. No, what is predictable is the conditions you might be in, but what cannot be predicted is what we will experience. Yeah. Okay, very good. Objective the assessment. One. Yeah, correct. We saw about the HRM, the personality characteristics. Okay. One thing you wonder. The size of the sun when compared to the planets. <laughs> <It's very cool. laughs> and yeah. the political okay. influence in all that. I'm really wondering how that. I wonder um, how, why is it not predictology or futurology? I mean, because yes, actually even I have this question. Yeah. How come it's not predictology? Good. We'll see that over the classes. Yeah. I mean, it's not part of the course really, but I can explain. Yeah. And uh, medical conditions according to the placement of the stars, that is. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, that's very interesting topic, but it Ma does it does happen. Okay. I mean. Ma Mars was shown as a inner planet. Probably we see from a geocentric, it is an external planet. So. Hmm. So what do you wonder? Uh, no, the thing is what we studied in uh, in the other basics, uh, uh, inner planet is only Venus and uh, Mercury. And uh, mm. uh, this Mars was an external planet. When we see from Mars, it is on the external side. So that's what I need to bit study more on this. Yeah, yeah. Anything, all the planets inside the asteroid belt are considered inner planets. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. They, it's Mars is also... So Yes, it, yes, that's right. Yes, yes. Now, one thing like I just uh, wonder like uh, how the past karma influenced the kind of a uh, astrological prediction. So I'm not very sure like uh, any like the, the, any relation uh, of the past karma in the maybe in the future astrology. It is placed on the seventh position in our birth chart. The planets. According to our past karma, the seventh place of our chart is uh, presented with the specific uh, this thing, uh, planet. Yeah. We'll see the, the details we will not discuss now. Mm. Let's move to the last part. Your present feeling in one word. Happy. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Engaging, interactive. Very good. Yeah, good learning. Very good. Eye opening. 
Very a little nice. overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> it's very uh, overwhelming can, to me. Venkat ji, can I ask you one question? Yeah, I mean, you're done. Done with this, then we'll move to the Q and A. Then ask. Yeah. Good. What's okay. the question? Yeah. You said uh, after. So sorry. Uh, yeah, one okay, person. go ahead, madam. If you want to ask, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, as you said, med medical astrology is also included. Will the course cover the uh, remedies also? Remedies for? The problems that a person is facing or to get rid of the situation that a person is into, the obstacles they are facing. Uh, not really. It's not part of the course. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. okay. Can I? Okay. Yeah. Um, see, we were uh, uh, discussing about the inner planets, outer planets, and uh, certain planets uh, which are excluded uh, probably from the consideration of uh, astrological calculations, etc. Mm. I was trying to correlate these planets versus the uh, this uh, chakra or chart wh where you have mentioned Aries, Taurus, Gemini, and all. Uh, I'm a bit confused. Uh, yeah. You know, you know, uh, how do I correlate uh, these planets? Um, you know, and uh, see them in the position of this one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, because this is prime number. This is twelve numbers here, and uh, yeah. you know, there are different uh, names. Uh, you know, of course, in English and uh, uh, in other languages that we can attribute versus the number of planets. Uh, I'm 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 still not clear if you can throw some light. Sure. So let's take this uh, the image we have here. Okay. And also, like uh, we are taking the zodiac sign from the stars uh, kind of a uh, stars positions. So I'm just wondering, like. Uh, uh, like why we are considering only planets so why not why not like those stars are also influencing somewhere like uh, our astrological things they, prediction. they also influence but in our first year of course we don't include stars okay so if you see yeah. what things are considered in astrology we have the planets let me switch off my video Planets, then what we call nakshatras. Yes. Okay. Zodiac. Then we have what is called the cosmic man. That means our life is divided into 12 houses. Kala Purusha. Okay. That means 12 houses representing different aspects of our living okay i won't get into detail because that will come in the uh, as lessons but just mentioning what all things are considered this 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 uh then uh, specifically we have asterisms okay then we have planet uh planets conjunct that means there's supposing you have two three planets sitting together in a sign, then that one, then we have planet, uh, planetary transits. That means the current real time one transits. Then we have what is called planetary dashas because our life is divided, said to be a lifespan of 120 years. So there are something called dashas. Okay, but these are all things, as I already mentioned in that one year course, what to expect. These things will not be there in the first year. These things won't be there. Okay, because you're gaining information on the, this is also not there in the first year. We'll have only this, 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 not this. Okay, this is also not there. So for these itself, there'll be so much of uh, uh, information that 
we can take only small small doses so that's why we are doing it in a, in, the, in a slow pace so you little by little only addition uh, information will be added but still if you see at the end of the one year there is a lot of information so it takes time for us to people to absorb what's there and unless you practice reading charts it'll be very hard to remember them okay we have practice is a very very important part of this learning okay i hope that clarifies was it Dean Bandhu who asked yes yes thank you oh, okay fine uh, I have a question, Venkat. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned zodiac is a combination of stars. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Okay. So when you said we take the stars, uh, not this year, but we are taking the zodiac. So we'll only talk of it as a zodiac sign. <clears throat> Zodiacs are specific constellations yeah, in the zodiac oh. belt. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So, coming back to the person. Hmm? One question. Uh, yeah. We have this uh, Nakshatra, no, Ashwini, Bharani, we keep have the stars, right? They are yes, stars yes. in the constellation or they are different? They are different. They are different, which are small divisions within the zodiac sign. That is more related to the moon. The moon crosses 27 nakshatras, okay, the, the, the brightest. Moves crosses. That's how it. Okay, so they are not related. Nakshatras will be done. In they are not related to no, zodiac itself, right? No, no. Zodiac is different. Nakshatras are different. Yeah. Venkat, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, see, uh, usually for astrology, we have this uh, birth time and birth place. Everything is. Uh, the key right key key thing is for that uh, to find what are the you have signs and uh, uh, I, even the horoscope but earlier days it used to be a natural but nowadays what happens most of the time the parents decide on the time themselves or with the consultation with their uh, astrologer and decide on that date so how accurate would be for those cases nowadays like uh, if the mm -hmm. date is coming somewhere on the Mula Nakshatra or anything wrong, they decide, okay, we'll have it on the, this date. So how accurate is those, uh, I mean, for them, the birth, birth time? See, for calculation, we only consider the uh, first time, the birth time. That means when the baby takes breath, breath beats, okay. But... Whether it is done naturally or, you know, uh, yeah. okay. intentionally, that is not in our scope. Okay. But for us, we'll calculate based on that specific birth time. But as we saw, astrology is not that, it's not going to predict everything. We need to, the person, the way the person takes actions in the life, what has been taken in the past life, all those things matter a lot for what happens uh, for the person. So we can't, all that is not good. It's it's not the because astrology doesn't is doesn't chart your life. Okay, the planet is uh, let's say they maybe they want to do it so that Jupiter comes in the first house, but that doesn't really decide your life. That's what we are trying to say through the statement that astrology is not predictology and not a futurology. Okay, because let's say I I, I intentionally. Uh, make sure the birth is there so that Jupiter comes in the Lagna so that I become wealthy. But nobody becomes wealthy just by sitting quietly. You need to do the things needed for it, right? right. In order to earn. So all those things really matter uh, a lot. So astrology is only a guide. It's right. not life. We are not gods. Okay, astrologists, many astrologists think they are gods. We are not gods here. It is just a guide. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, Venkat, I have a You're question. Okay. I have one question. Yeah. The astral belt, when you when we observe sure. the within the astral belt of thirty degrees spatial angle, when you observe the uh, yeah. the uh, uh, constellations, at what angle, uh, at what reference you observe? Is it with respect to the azimuth? There is a specific star. Okay. That is in a Vedic astrology, we'll be covering that. Okay. So we'll not spend time here for that. Okay. The only thing you can be aware now is that 
Vedic astrology is based on a specific star, but Western astrology is based on the uh, tropical uh, uh, solar, this one, like equinox. So that's the reason the Western zodiac sign will keep changing because the sun doesn't meet the same point after one revolution. Okay, so that is not, for example, if, the, if you go by Western zodiac is like if you look at the sky above you, after one full revolution, you will not see the same sky. It will be a bit different. Okay, because of the tilt of Earth and you know, the kind of orbital we have. But since Vedic astrology is based on a position of a star, so when you start at a point, you look at a star, after one relation, you look at the same star, it will be same, at the same position. Stars don't literally don't move. So that's why this is more accurate in terms of zodiac uh, calculations. Okay. okay, thank you. Sure. I think one person asked, that is still... Pending, many other questions came in. How these coming in the signs, right? I'll just try to show you uh, one minute on this. Just spend one minute. So what I was saying is we consider, we know the zodiac belt somewhere over here. Okay. Let's say that's a zodiac belt. I'll draw it like a belt. So, sorry. Oh, okay, that. So now supposing... I have a zodiac belt. Okay. The solar system is somewhere here only. Okay. So I might have, I'll just, for example, case, I'm just doing three. Okay. In, as I said, it is geocentric. Okay. Now, let's say Jupiter is here. Okay. I'll draw this fully. Jupiter is there. <clears throat> Let's say I'm having here Mars, J, Mars. And let's say in this orbit, uh, I'm having Mercury. Okay. Now we, I showed you this is the zodiac belt. Okay. And this is divided into 12 parts. Uh, just a rough diagram I'm doing. Supposing we started here, okay, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, okay, then, so then we have Leo, Virgo, then we had uh, Libra, Scorpio, okay, then we have Sagittarius, okay, and so on. Now, if you see, where is Jupiter? Jupiter, is, if we map it, Jupiter, make it, extend it to the zodiac belt, it is in Sagittarius. What is this? Mars. Mars is in Libra. Mercury. This is Gemini. Are you getting some idea now? That's how it is. Okay. Okay. I'm just. This is a little bit yeah. making sense. Yeah. The the solar, yeah. solar system literally is in single plane almost. Okay. Okay. I think so still no from, from the point of view of the earth, right? Yes, geocentric still. Yes, correct, correct. That, so that's the picture I drawn. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining today. I'll Thank, you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Michael. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, very much. Thank you, Venkat. Thank you, Venkat. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you, Venkat. Thank you. Hey, Aditya.